Hey guys, Mike Robertson here with IFAST University, here to talk to you today about rest periods. So let's start with the basics. What is a rest period? So let's say you're going into the gym, banging out sets of squats. You do a set of eight to 10 squats, and before you take that next set, or before you perform that next set, you take what's called a rest period. And that could be anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds, even as long as eight to 10 minutes. Now the question becomes, why do I change my rest period? Why can't I use, say, 60 seconds rest regardless of how many repetitions I'm doing? Quite simply, when we're performing an exercise, the amount of rest that we give ourselves dictates the kind of training adaptation that we're gonna get. For instance, let's say you are doing those sets of 10 on the squat. You're probably chasing a more metabolic focused adaptation, so you're trying to shed body fat or build muscle. If that's the case, you're doing high rep sets, you're generally gonna work on a shorter rest period. In contrast, if you're doing things that are more strength or power focused, you're gonna need a longer time to recover. The nervous system takes a little bit longer, and as such, you're gonna need to accommodate for that by giving yourself a longer rest period in between sets. Now, if you really break it down, as a trainer or a coach, what you're really working with here are manipulating the work to rest ratios. So what I mean by that, let's say you're chasing a more metabolic focus change like body composition or hypertrophy. You're gonna perform sets that take longer periods of time, 30, 40, maybe as long as 60 seconds. And on top of that, you're gonna work, or excuse me, you're gonna rest a very short period of time. So again, 30 to 60 seconds. So if you think about that, the work to rest ratio is like one to one, it's very dense. Now, in contrast, if you think about a powerlifting program or an Olympic weightlifting program, you, only, you may only perform one to two repetitions, but you're gonna rest a really long period of time because it's very neurally intensive. So what I want you to think about, instead of just thinking about purely rest periods or sets and reps, think about how the whole puzzle fits together. How do your sets, your reps, your rest period, your time under tension all come together to give you a complete understanding of how the program should work? So think about this. If you've ever lifted heavy weights, you know you don't bang out a heavy single or a heavy set of five and then rest 60 seconds and go back and get under the bar again. Physiologically, it just doesn't work that way. In contrast, let's say you're chasing a fat loss type program or a fat loss type change. You don't perform eight to 10 really hard reps and then rest eight to 10 minutes in between sets. Things just don't jive, they don't work like that. So if you can line all those variables up, your sets, your reps, your time under tension, your rest period, so that they're all working together, that's when you're gonna have a really harmonious program that creates an awesome adaptation. So to kind of help you see this in a more visual manner, because I'm a very visual guy, what I created here is basically what's known as the neural metabolic continuum. So if you think about everything that we do as either a neural focused adaptation like speed or strength or power, all the way down to a metabolic type change like hypertrophy or fat loss style training, it all fits on this continuum. So what I always like to think of is when I'm creating a metabolic style program, I want to be dense with the workout. So the sets are gonna take a long period of time and the rest periods are gonna be rather short. Okay, so a lot of times zero to 60 seconds. Now, I'll be honest here, there's very, very few times where I'm gonna use zero seconds of rest. More often than not, I'd like to give somebody 30 to 60 seconds rest in between their sets, even if they're doing say a squat and a bench press or a squat and a push up, because that short amount of time in between sets allows them to increase their intensity. If you're just bouncing from exercise to exercise to exercise, what ultimately suffers is your intensity level. So even if I'm creating a fat loss style program, generally 30 seconds rest is gonna be more than enough. So the next zone or the next bracket that I tend to use is in this one to two minutes of rest in between sets. So if this is more fat loss style training, this one to two minutes is more of hypertrophy style training. So the big question is, well, what changes? Quite simply, if I give you a longer period of time to recover in between sets, you can use more intensity. And that's one of the big takeaways from this. The further I come to this neural end of the spectrum, the more recovery that I have in between sets. So for a lot of my hypertrophy programs, one to two minutes is gonna be the baseline or kind of the gold standard, and then I can go up or down from there. Now our third zone or our third bracket that I tend to lump a lot of my clients and athletes into is this two to four minutes of rest in between sets. Quite simply in this zone, we're getting a much more full recovery period. But what happens now is it's not just a metabolic change or a metabolic recovery, but it's a more complete neural recovery as well. 
Famed sprint coach Charlie Francis says that the nervous system takes at least five to six times as long to recover as the metabolic system, if not upwards of 10 to 20 times as long. So what he means by that is if you're trying to be fast, strong, or explosive, you have to give your body downtime so that it can recover in between sets. So my last zoner bracket is kind of more than four to five minutes of rest. So when you're in this zone, you better be pushing some weight or you better be running really, really fast. You know, I power lifted for many, many years. And one of the things that was always shocking to me was how long of a break you needed in between max effort sets because it takes so much neural efficiency. It takes so much neural currency, if you will, to push heavy loads or to run fast. You need that full recovery in between sets. All right, guys, so to help kind of wrap this up, I think it would be helpful to give you guys kind of a visual as to how all these pieces would fit together. So if we're creating a metabolic focus program or a fat loss style program, we're gonna generally need more reps per set. So say two sets of 10, three sets of 10, somewhere in that range. But again, we've gotta keep those work to rest ratios pretty tight. So I'm gonna work on somewhere in the 30 to 60 seconds of rest time frame. Now you could, kind of throw together non-competing exercises, say squats and push-ups or deadlifts and rows, things of that nature to kind of get the upper lower superset going on. But as long as you're giving them a little bit of rest in between sets, you're probably gonna be fine. So that's one option. Second, let's say you're doing more of a just general strength program, say five by five. If you're gonna be on a five by five style program, you're gonna need more rest in between sets. You're pushing some pretty significant loads. So in this case, that's where I'm gonna give them, say maybe three minutes rest in between sets. And that may even be a little bit tight. If you're really pushing weight, it may be four to five minutes. Now, one thing I wanna note here, don't just think of strength. This could be power, this could be speed. A lot of you guys that are doing speed, work with your clients and with your athletes, this is important to note. I don't think you're doing this, but there are a lot of coaches out there where their speed work ends up becoming conditioning work because they're just banging out rep after rep after rep. High quality speed, strength and power work necessitates that you take time to recover. So give your athletes that time so they can recover and that all of their work is really high quality. Last but not least, let's say you are a power lifter or an Olympic lifter and you're going for that big PR. If you're gonna do, say, 90% of your max, 95% of your max for uh, a set of three or something of that nature. If you're going this heavy, you need time to recover. Uh, I remember one specific workout when I was powerlifting, uh, my first workout that I'd ever squatted 500 in a session. I actually did 500 for three reps. And I tell you what, I think I took eight to 10 minutes rest in between sets because I was gassed. I was so mentally and neurally fatigued. So the bottom line is, based on how many repetitions you're doing per set and how high your intensity is, is gonna help you dictate how much rest and how much recovery you need in between sets. So guys, I hope this was valuable. I hope you have a better understanding of how to manipulate rest periods and how rest periods really have to fall in line with the rest of your program to get the best possible training adaptation. I'm Mike Robertson. If you guys are enjoying this stuff from iFast University, make sure to check out our website, check out our blog. We've got tons of free content out there. And again, if you guys love the content, $1 will buy you your first 30 days at iFast University. So if you haven't already, give us a shot because I guarantee you're going to love the material. Again, I'm Mike Robertson, signing off.